We're on episode 5 of Big Brother 26 and it is eviction night. Or at least it was last night because I'm filming this a day later. Sorry about that. I hope this video does alright. But shouts out to everybody that's been watching my videos and have let me know in real life. Like my like I was at work and someone let me know that they watched my video for Big Brother. <laughs> I'm like, you didn't even watch the show. You gotta watch the show. And he's probably gonna see this. But yeah, he said he was gonna check out the show because he watched my video. And shouts out to like other people who have messaged me in real life and talked about the show because they see that I'm reviewing it and now like they're reaching out to me because they're like, oh you watched this show and now I have Big Brother fans. I'm sorry, big brother friends that I can talk about the show with. So that's cool. But jumping right into episode five, we start off with the aftermath of the veto ceremony where we saw Lisa take herself off the block and saw Karen nominate Matt. So now Matt's officially on the block and we see Karen showing no mercy to Matt saying like he deserved it, he had it coming, which I mean, yes, y'all are in a rivalry, of course. She'd be not smart to not nominate him because that's her rival. That's her rival right now. So get your rival out the house. I don't blame her. Kenny's talking about how, oh, he's so sad that Matt's on the block because he was going to use Matt to be like his main campaigning guy while he was on the block, but now Matt's on the block, so he has to campaign against Matt, but he was also saying that he wouldn't do that because Matt's like a son to him or whatever. We see Mackenzie and Lisa talking in the room about their votes, and I'm, I want to bring up the fact that Mackenzie does look different in almost every single DR, every episode. Like, she, she definitely be changing her look up, and I... Personally, I'm not like knocking it, but I see on X or the Twitter world, a lot of people are like, oh, it's not fair. Who is this? Like, I see the memes. Like, it's funny because they'll like post a meme of her, or I'm sorry, a DR of her and be like, who's this? And they'll post another picture of her because she does look different. I will say like, she be changing her look up, but they say like in past seasons, people could not change their hair or could not change like a lot of things about themselves just because of production. So they say like, it's not fair, but I just wanted to mention that. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with it or disagree. Then we cut to Kenny and Matt talking about votes, like they're adding them all up and stuff. And at first I thought that they were going to say like, okay, look, let's just campaign for, let's team up and campaign for each other to stay so the chemo can leave. Which would have been perfectly fine for them to say, but no. Kenny's talking about, oh, well basically, they should have been saying like, let's one of us win the AI arena and the other one, like, let's just campaign to, to the point where the other one will automatically stay no matter what. That didn't happen, as we'll see later, but spoiler alerts. So, but Kenny was saying that basically he would not, he wouldn't campaign against Matt no matter what. And if they're against each other, he's going to throw away his game and all this. And I'm just like, Kenny, this is a disappointment, in my opinion. Because in the beginning of the episode, at the bottom of the screen, it said day seven. So they've known each other for a week. Like, and this is day seven, so they've really known each other for six days. This is insane. I just hate when I see people do that because there's people that will actually want to be on the show that would not just throw it all away. Especially if you're throwing away on day seven. I can understand if you got super duper close with somebody and you threw your game away and it was like day 67. Even though, like, you're super close to winning at that point. But I don't know, like, just... Day seven, you barely know this person, so it just seems weird. Imagine if you get out the house, like he gets out the house because he threw his game away, then he goes online to see Matt, and he sees something that Matt did that like he completely disagrees with. Like you didn't know him, you didn't know him well enough. I don't know. But then we see Matt, who respectively went around and campaigned. We see him talking to Mackenzie. Of course, he has her vote. He said that he also thinks that he has Leah's vote, which he did. Then we see him talking to Chelsea, and I was just like, why are you campaigning to Chelsea? She don't even get a vote. Then he talks to Cedric, and I'm like, same thing. He don't even get a vote. Why are you campaigning to Cedric and Chelsea? Then she, he talks to Rubina, and like everyone's li like at this point, and she's listening, but she's like, if he's on the block, you got to get him out. Because just stereotype-wise, like he, that's the type of person that would dominate the game. You look at Cody Calafuri or you look at Tyler or you look at like it's a lot of different uh examples of this so Rubina had a right mindset like yeah I'll listen to you but I'm voting you out. I'm voting you out then we see him talking to Cam and Brooklyn so like he was he was on a campaign trail for sure then we see Matt bring all these people into a room so it's Matt Mackenzie Leah Cam Cedric Chelsea Brooklyn Rubina he brought all of them into a room and basically said this is an alliance it's called the barbershop let's have each other's back and all this stuff so basically vote me please keep me inside the house and I, I 
I'm just like, wow, like this this doesn't look sus at all. You're the you're the leading force of this alliance. <laughs> I don't know. Now, I, I feel like he should have he would have been better off just trying to campaign for votes individually than to bring them all together. Then we see Kimo, who I feel like he's on the block, but like in my opinion, he just seems so not relevant. Like it seems like everyone in my opinion, it seems like everyone's gonna keep him. It feels like the block is between Matt and Kenny, which foreshadowing. But uh and it also, I felt like Matt was going to leave this episode because he got the most screen time. Like, every scene was Matt. But, I mean, he was the one campaigning. Because then Chemo, in his scene where he was talking to Lisa, he was saying he felt like he's not campaigning. And he feels like there is a chance that he could leave. And he was just trying to be, you know... Uh, that was him camp campaigning. Then we see him talk to t -Core, and he talked to Brooklyn. I'm like... Kimo is literally talking to the sweetest people in the house. Like, I feel like he's, like, he knows what he's, like, who he's campaigning to, basically, if you know what I'm saying. Now, I want to mention that they went to commercial, and as they were going to commercial, Julie said, we're about to see another Le Le another Angela blow up, but this time, who's her target? And I'm pretty sure me and everyone else that watches the live feeds or watches live feed updates was assuming that this is the one with Lisa that we heard about but didn't see and we have not heard about at all. But no. Angela, we see a scene with Angela, Kenny, and Quinn in the kitchen. And Angela says to Kenny, it may not seem like it, but I'm really counting on you. Like, I'm really, really, like, basically saying that she needs him to win the AI arena, which is, I feel like all, I feel like almost everyone was just counting chemo out. That's why I said when I said like, oh, he's irrelevant, he wasn't seeming relevant because people assumed that he would be on the block and whoever he was sitting next to would go home. That's what they were voting out. But, because like here, Angela said she was counting on Kenny to win the AI arena, so that it's down to Matt and chemo because at that point, Matt goes home. Kenny was saying like he don't want to fight and like he like he's not doing that. He he literally said to her while Quinn was sitting right there, Matt's my closest alliance in the house. Like what? Like that's my closest ally. What is wrong with you? Like this was just this was I was way more on Angela's side, but Angela was yelling at him, so I guess I wasn't on that side. But like it's like she's like, that's not your son. And she's like, he's like, I don't care. Like he's basically throwing his game away for Matt, which it seemed like he was real. Like, you know, sometimes people say that they would do something, but then it's just for, like, cameras. It seemed like Kenny, Kenny was dead serious. I don't know. It was weird. Like, the fight was not, like, that bad, but they, it definitely was a fight. Like, they were going at it, and Quinn was sitting there, silent, but then more people came into the kitchen also. But Ken, um, Quinn in his, conf in his DR was saying, like, You've known him six days. Like, Kenny, what are you doing? And, like, I'm pretty sure we all felt that way. And I'm not going to lie. I feel like Kenny's family and friends probably felt that way. Like, what are you doing? Like, it's sometimes it shows like this or anything. Like, when you meet somebody and you're really close with them for a minute, but then because y'all are close to each other. But then when the show ends, y'all are going to talk, like, once every three months. Not saying that. Everyone does this, but it happens a lot. So, like, it's just like, you're really going to throw this away for this? Like, this is weird. Because not even, like, the finishing money that you win, but, like, what about, like, the money that you get for staying week after week? You're just throwing everything away. Like, like uh, Quinn said, forget my family, forget my friends, forget my food truck. Like, I want Matt to stay. And, like, Kenny was saying, like, I would love to sit on the sideline and watch Matt dominate the game. And Like, What? I, Angela was yelling at him and I was, uh, I don't know, I don't know. And then we get to the AI arena and we see the three guys, Kenny, Kimo, and Matt inside these booths and I was like, oh wait, like all this time I've been thinking AI arena, I imagine, like I hear the word arena. And, like, I'm a wrestler, so coming from, like, the wrestling, like, industry, like, I, when I hear arena, I think, like, a big, and, like, I don't know, I feel like they'll be running, like, I think of, like, sports, but they were inside a booth, so I'm like, oh, it's about to be questions, so it's, like, a regular, like, thing, but no, it was not that, so they were inside a booth, so they couldn't see each other's answers, but really what they did was there were screens all around, and they had two minutes to go to the screens, the screens were flashing, and it was multiple screens, and they had to count what house guests appeared the most, sometimes it'll be a picture with, like, T Core nine times or like Angela, it'll be a screen with mixed mixed house guests. So it'll be like Angela twice, T Core three times, uh, Chelsea five times, uh, 
Cam once. So it was a really fun. I liked it. I liked it. And like I felt like Matt started running to the booth first. And I, at that point, I feel like when one person runs to the booth, you have to just take your chance and go. Because he's going to lock in. So, like, if he gets it right, it's over already anyway. Kimo locked in with Quinn. Kenny locked in with Joe. And Matt locked in with T-Core. And the winner was actually Quinn. So, Kimo won the AI arena. And I love this outcome because... Like I've been saying throughout this video, everyone was calling him out. That he seemed like he wasn't relevant, but now he's the one out of these three that's actually won the competition. None of those, at, up to this point, none of those three have won a competition, and now Kimo has won. Not a lot of people in this house have won a competition, but Kimo's up there. So now he's not irrelevant. He's gone from irrelevant to relevant, and I, I love it. So he was out, and then. They were voted to the house, and everyone cheered. Like, everyone was super happy and stuff. And I thought, oh, man, <laughs> this is going to be very awkward with weeks to come when y'all eliminate somebody or someone wins that y'all don't want to win, and it's not that big reaction as it was. But it was nice that he won, and everyone was so happy. But, I mean, like, there was two guys that were still on the block. And I hated this moment because then Julie's like, all right, you guys, you guys have about two minutes or one minute, 60 seconds to go campaign. And they just stood there. Like, and I'm pretty sure a lot of Big Brother Super fans were disappointed. I'm pretty sure Big Brother Production was disappointed. Julie was clearly disappointed. Like, they didn't do anything. They just stood there. And I was like, I'm just like, I literally said out loud, how boring. Like, they won't campaign against each other. And to be honest, I didn't even hear what they said. I didn't hear what they said. Only thing I heard was Kenny say, Julie, is this it? Is this what I get? Like, or do I get a speech later? And she was like, this is your time to pull somebody into a room because they weren't doing it. So she literally told them to do it and they still didn't listen. I just feel like this is just, this is ridiculous and just play the game, play the game. But they didn't and uh, they, they, she, at that point she just was like, let's get to the speech. So they sat down and like literally just started voting or they did their speech. Kenny's speech was nothing important. Well, everything important. Nothing special for me to mention is what I'm saying. Um. He said Kenny was like, or Matt was like a son to him already. And he loves his dad because his dad was a police officer as well. But I don't know if you should even be saying that. What are you, why are you going to love his dad just because he's a police officer? What if he was a bad cop? There's a lot of bad cops. In the world. Oh, let me stop. Anyway, so then, Matt's speech. This speech went on way too long. He, <laughs> he seemed like he was trying to, like, win the fan base over because he like didn't want to be like I don't know he wanted to be looked at positively and not negatively which I don't blame him but it just went on too long uh, even Julie said that sounded biblical to me uh, he mentioned his mom a lot he he said like he wants to see every single person outside the house he forgives Angela Angela was making faces like what like I did not say sorry don't say you apologize to me <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, that's about it, I guess. And then they get to the vote. And what was up? What was up with Joe? Joe went last, and then he just, like, stayed in the hallway. He just didn't leave out. And then Julie just went to the vote, and then he runs out the room. Uh, Matt was evicted. Uh, three people voted to keep him, which I did not write down, but I assume it was Leah and Mackenzie were two of them. I don't know who that third would have been. Maybe Lisa? I don't know that though, so don't, please do not take that as factual. I, I think Mackenzie did though, for sure. Mackenzie, and I just assume Leah because she was in their little Thruple Alliance, not Thruple, <laughs> Third Wheel Alliance, and uh, Lisa had to fight with Angela, so she probably just wants to like get back at Angela, I assume. I don't know that. I don't know though. Uh, he gets eliminated, he like, or evicted, he like hugs everyone, it seemed like. I don't know if he hugged Angela. Uh, he walks out for his interview. And his interview was basically pretty normal. Uh, he thanked Julie because his mom's Filipino. So, like, that's an inspiration, seeing somebody like that. Which I do think is a conversation to have, like, in life. Like, I, I like that the host of Big Brother is an Asian American. Because, like, a lot of times on TV, it feels like if you're Asian or a different, like, ethnicity you get cast in those certain roles, certain type of roles. But why can't a host just be from a different country? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we could have 
her with an, uh, a UK host. It could be anyone. So like, it is nice to see that she's been the host of Big Brother since like what? How long has this show been out? 2001? 2003? I don't know. A long time ago. But the interview was normal. It was fine. She, he said that he whispered inside Mackenzie's ear because he was talking to her for a long time. That day story wasn't over, so maybe he wants to date her outside the show. That was it, though. So, yeah, it didn't seem like it was a battle, back, a battle back or anything like that. Because he, she said that he'd be interviewed tomorrow, which is today. But other than that, though, this review is over. But I do have something else to say because I watched this a second ago. And right after it was over, I avoided spoilers all day, by the way. All night, all day, I avoided spoilers. I didn't know what was happening. So right when it ended, I actually turned on the live feeds. Spoiler warning ahead, just for the HOH. So I turned on the feeds, and immediately what I saw was Chelsea. It was a close-up of Chelsea, talk, and she was listening to someone else talk. And I noticed she had on a robe that said HOH. So I assumed that Chelsea is the HOH. She was talking to, like, Cedric. Cedric was seeing like he was doing most of the talking. And then also, I think Quinn was in there, and they were talking about her, her, her. So there, there's a her that they want as the, as the target, I assume. It seemed like, and I know they mentioned Lisa, so I think it, is, it might be Lisa. I'm thinking Lisa's the target. I think she wants Lisa out. Congrats to Chelsea. I like Chelsea a lot. And we're about to see Chelsea, HOH, reign. This should be cool. She went from a, a mascot to, by the way, Chelsea and Cedric didn't vote, but I'm pretty sure y'all already knew that. But she went from a mascot, not being able to compete in all those challenges, to now she's the head of household. I'm so happy. I'm excited to see this week. This season has still been great. I love it. Uh, favorite this episode? I feel like this episode we didn't really get to see a lot of people. Uh, I guess my favorite this this episode would actually have to be Chemo. Because of his comeback story. Like, <laughs> how he was like, I feel like there is a chance I could go home. Like, he was like talking to like the the good people, like Brooklyn and T-Core. And I do think Lisa's a good person. Just, people just don't like her because she's boring. Um, but then he did a comeback story. He ended up winning the AI arena when he was the underdog. Even though he was the underdog that was going to stay no matter what. So... Alright guys, but this is it for this video. Be sure to leave it a like, comment, subscribe, and share it on all forms social media. I will see y'all on Sunday after that episode. And until next time guys, catch you later.